Hi, it's Linda Jennings from Color Storms. It is time to harvest the woad. I've got a nice batch of it in my earth box now and it's starting to get eaten up. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the first batch. According to my instructions, I'm supposed to cut off the outside part of the plant up to a half and then I can let the plant continue to grow and eventually have a second harvest. I've brought my leaves in after harvesting and according to the dyers in the Connecticut River Valley who are basically following this book, A Dyer's Garden, you're supposed to cut up the leaves. Uh, the book says put them in whole. Connecticut River Valley folks say cut them up. I'm gonna cut them up, I guess. I did rinse them also because there was, um, I guess, slug poop on them, you know? After having been eaten up by the slugs, that's all I can think of what that was. So I just wanted to rinse the leaves off. And that was recommended in the book as well. So I've got some water that has boiled and is ready to be poured over these leaves because the important thing is to get it done as quickly as possible. Within an hour or, or as soon as possible from what I can gather. I did not weigh these before I cut them up. My bad. I filled this pot up and that will be my measurement for my notes. Honestly, I had more than I thought I'd have. Plus, if I get a second harvest, I'll be really pleased. If I can dye one 50 gram hank of yarn with this and get a decent blue, I will be very happy. All right, I'm gonna call this cut up enough. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the boiling hot water over it. get some oven mitts. And then Connecticut River Valley folks said that if she got better color if she covered the plant. So I'm going to put this lid over it. That's why I picked this pot because this lid would fit. And so I'm, now I'm just going to leave it for 45 minutes, she says. Okay, it's about 15 minutes later. These leaves have been soaking. And the next instruction now is to Get rid, of, get rid of the leaves and strain off the liquid. The water's not super hot. I think I'll put it in this bucket. Apparently I can use the leaves later for just like I do with lots of other uh, natural dyes. I'm just gonna simmer it and strain it and add the yarn to it. So we'll do that later. I removed most of the leaves here. 
I'm just gonna strain the rest of the liquid out. I missed a couple. <laughs> okay. I've got a, um, you can kind of see an orangey color, I guess. Orangey rosy color, which I think is correct. Now I'm supposed to um, bring the pH up. So I've got some pH strips here. Let's see what it is right now. The pH currently, as you can see, is very, uh, it's on the low side, on the, out, on the low side opposed to, which I think means it's more acidic. It's on the acidic line side. We need to bring it up and make it more alkaline. So I've got some, pre-dissolved soda ash here, which I'm going to carefully add to the liquid. See if that ends up being enough. I will stir it and then test the water again with a stir stick. Here it is. Ooh. I can see it has changed. I'm getting more of that green color. That's what I was hoping for with the change of the pH. Let's test it. See if it's dark enough. Oh yeah. I said shoot for 10 and it looks like I'm about there. I guess I could add a little more, but it looks pretty good. And then the next step is to add oxygen to it. I'm going to Pour the liquid back and forth from one can into the other and introduce oxygen. And that's apparently, it, the color will change again. They said don't skip on this step. Um, aerate it for a whole uh, five to 10 minutes at a time. So, change from sort of an orangey rose to a green and we'll see if upon aeration it will turn blue. changing color. Is anybody keeping track of the five minutes for me? Or do I just keep doing it until it changes color? I have no idea.
This is very tedious. I'm gonna take a little break, <laughs> but I'll keep working on it and get back to you. So I did a lot of that pouring back and forth over, I don't know, a half hour here and there. I definitely gave it a good, good effort. Unfortunately, the book said that um, the dark green color was also acceptable. And apparently this is a step where it has changed into indigo. Um, and you can see that the bubbles on top are blue. So I'm going to go with that. I've got some pre-dissolved. Um, this stuff is diarrhea dioxide. You can also use spectrolite, but this is the reducing agent. So I'm going to turn that in, pour that in, and then hopefully this will change from that dark blue to a kind of a yellowy green color. I'll stir that in. I can see a little bit of a change, change in it. Hmm. Not sure if maybe it needs a little bit more or if it just needs time. So I'm just gonna let it sit and reduce a little bit more. The bubbles are no longer blue except some in the middle. It's definitely changed somewhat. The color that I'm getting from here, it's still kind of green. It's a slightly different green than it was, but I'm gonna read up a little bit more on it and see if I need to add perhaps a little more reducing agent or just give it time. So according to my reading, it really just needed time for the reduction. And I'm really happy to say that after 45 minutes, we have success. The dark green liquid is now a lovely, clear yellow which tells us that the indigo is ready for yarn. So I have in here some yarn in a laundry bag for my pot up here that has the indigo leaves. It's been heating and it's now at 170 degrees. I'm gonna pop this in there. Turn my heat off and just let that set overnight. And then this one goes into the indigo. Oh my gosh, it's this beautiful yellow color. Look at that, that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Now, unlike when I make my indigo pots with um, indigo extract and lye and spectral, spectralite and everything that I, that I normally do. I count to 10 and the dyeing is done. It's such a powerful dye. But the woad is supposed to sit there now for like 30 minutes. So I'll go ahead and let it sit there and absorb all the indigo and then remove it and hopefully it will uh, turn a delightful blue. <laughs> okay, here's the moment of truth. We've got uh, this yellow yarn in the wood vat. I'm hoping that it'll turn blue when I take it out. It's been sitting in here for about 45 minutes. Ooh, look, 
there it goes. Oh my gosh, that's so neat. It often happens so quickly in the indigo, regular indigo pot, that you can barely see it happening. But I love that this happened slower, slow enough so I can actually see it. Oh man, that's beautiful. Can't believe I actually got it to work. Now, according to the book, um, I'm supposed to let it oxidize for as long as I kept it in there. So I should just leave it to air out for, you know, 45 minutes before I rinse it. That's great. Let's see how the, um, see how the other one is doing in here. Not much. <laughs> That's not turning much color at all. Hmm. Maybe I'll put this in the exhaust indigo vat since the leaves aren't giving me much. Hmm. I guess if I left it in there longer, I might get more, but boy, that's should have been more of that after 45 minutes. I'll put it in the indigo pot. Maybe we can get a lighter, get a little more color, maybe just like a lighter blue. In conclusion, let's see what happens with this uh, second yarn here in the woad bat. After all this trouble, I'm supposed to exhaust the bat, give it every last chance to do whatever it's gonna do. Let's see if it's gonna do something. Ah, oh, yeah, right away. We're getting a nice light blue. I love it. Ugh, oh, I'm glad it still worked. Dying something with the, uh, the leftover woad leaves did not work. I did not expect to get an entire hundred grams of yarn out of that single pot of woad leaves. I am really thrilled. Oh my gosh, this is turning pretty dark. Here's the first one. It oxidized for the same amount of time this was in. Right now, about another 45 minutes has gone by. And this one, hey, this one's turning out like something. It's not just a light blue. It, it looks great. It's kind of uneven. But uh, again, I will just let it uh, oxidize. Give it some time. Anyway, basically the Dyer's Garden and the blog from that I mentioned before, it was great advice. Growing with woad actually works. Uh, getting to die out of it like this works really well. And the plants came from Putnam Hill Nursery. They grew so fast and I went from planting to maturity in less than two months, maybe six weeks. So I love the plants growing from that nursery. They're all doing so well. So next plant's gonna be Hopi Red. Bye for now.